In this episode, we'll be exploring how to ask for help. We'll discuss how to gain community support for your art room, program, and budget. We'll also look at ways to nab great volunteers and how you build up the buy-in for your program and different ways that you can collaborate with your community to create engaging experiences for students. Hi, I'm Renee Green, and I'm an elementary and intermediate art teacher in South Central Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Art of Education University Zero Budget Art Room, where we celebrate your ingenuity and help you make the most of your budget, all while spending zero out of pocket. Asking for help for your art room is imperative to making your program what you want it to be. And while we know our teachers have amazing ingenuity and we can pull out this incredible creativity from our students despite our budget, we shouldn't have to do that with no budget and we shouldn't have to do that out of our own pocket. So it may seem obvious, but I use handouts for a lot of things. I use them to reach out to parents about volunteering. I use them to leave with businesses when I am seeking a donation. And I also send home to families in the beginning of the year a donation request should they want to help contribute to our program and our supplies. So this paper doesn't just seek purchase supplies, but things that families might have at home. I never want a family to feel like they can't contribute because they may not be able to buy supplies. And then at the bottom, there's a little slip for parents to return if they would like to help in the art room. And it's very simple with their name, the best time for them to volunteer, their contact information, and also what they would like to help with. And you'll wanna make sure that you check with your school's procedures on sending home donation requests. Another important thing to think of is what you bring when you're asking for a donation. So first, always go in person. A business or somebody who is potentially going to donate to your program will always make a better connection if they are looking at you. And when I go, I introduce myself, obviously explain why I'm there, and then I leave with them a handout that reminds them about what we talked about and who I am again. So I found that it's helpful when people have a way to remember you and reach back out. And sometimes if a company cannot make a monetary donation, they will donate goods. And we can use paper goods in our classroom constantly. And these lids were a total score. I got, I think, like two sleeves of them once from a restaurant, and then I thanked them for them via an email, and they were like, if you need more, let us know. And I was like, well, I can use more, and they gave me a whole box. So our students recently partnered with a local coffee company to decorate the sleeves of their to-go coffee cups, and things like that are a perfect opportunity for two reasons. It partners your students and their art with local community businesses, and it can also be a great way to maybe exchange services, like your students decorate the coffee to go sleeves, maybe in exchange for a certain amount of containers that you can use to store supplies with. A few years ago, I partnered with a local arts council to help them decorate wooden paint palettes for their art auction in spring. So they provided me with 150 wooden paint palettes and how we decorated them was totally up to us. So it was a neat thing because it provided a project for my students and also a way for their art to get out into the community too. For more awesome information and materials, check out Pro, an on-demand PD for art teachers that features hands-on tutorials, strategies, and resources. And if you're already a Pro member, check out the following packs like advocating for your elementary art program, fundraising at the secondary level, and partnering with your local art community. And if you're not already a pro member, head on over to our website, which we'll link in the description box down below for more information on how to get pro for your district. So when I came to my current district, I worked between three elementary schools. And what I noticed immediately was that I had a good bit of supplies for drawing and painting, but I didn't have any fiber supplies. And I wanted to get a collaborative loom for each room and a bunch of yarn to get us started. And my first year here, I wrote a grant. So this is is the collaborative loom that I got for all three of my classrooms. This became a beautiful fiber center. So when the kids are done, they can come up here and they can get yarn from the baskets down below. And the actual loom is from an artist as well. And so I was really proud that I was able to not only secure something like that for my room using a grant, but also support another artist in the process too. And I was able to get a little bit of everything like rug yarn and regular weighted yarn and even include some more roving style yarn, which is great for like my younger students too. 
to. And the best news ever was that after I bought the looms and after I bought all the yarn for all three of my classrooms, I was told I actually had more money left over. So I was able to secure sewing kits. I was able to buy a little toolbox for each table where I can keep needles for sewing projects and some really good fabric scissors. This was all grant money, which was like the best thing that I could have done. Help doesn't just come in the form of grants and donations to your room, which are obviously important too and very helpful, but it also comes in the form of people. I had 48 classes and over a thousand students between three different schools, but we were able to do wildly successful things by the support that we had garnered. And truly the support that I have for my coworkers is really what allows me to have the vision that I see in my head for my program exit and enter the real world. Cross-curricular opportunities have truly helped me build great relationships with my coworkers. And it can be hard finding time for cross-curricular work amidst everything else that we do. But it's a moment where they take their classroom activities, they take what they're doing in art, and they're able to build connections and suddenly their education isn't compartmentalized. Like everything ties together. And I'm doing that right now with a history teacher here. So one of the history teachers here had approached me and asked me if I knew what a Egyptian faience was. I did, but I didn't. I didn't know that it was called faience. I knew it as Egyptian paste, but basically the way that Egyptians glaze their ceramics. So as the clay dries, salts rise to the surface of the clay and that coating that rises actually becomes the glaze of the ceramic piece. This is the clay that we mixed up. The salts have risen. It's had time to dry and then it comes out with that beautiful blue glaze. But I'm really excited about this because they're learning about Egypt and Egyptian culture and they are studying this art technique in their history class, which is such a cool thing to be able to then give them that experience. I have found that some of my most rewarding experiences with my students has come from cross-curricular work. We know why art matters, but we have to help others understand why it matters. We have to remind others that it directly impacts a student's academic performance, that when we can integrate great arts into their academics, their instruction is more powerful. We know that it improves their critical and um, creative problem solving. And we also know that art directly and positively impacts their social and emotional and psychological performance and well-being. And the more that we advocate for our program and for our students, and the more that we show the power of what we are doing, the more we can garner support from our community and from our colleagues and from our upper administration as well. And so I have found that buy-in is huge when you're looking for support for your program. I always have treats and this could be donuts and a box of coffee or it could even just be my express kettle from home and different kinds of tea. You can exchange services too for donations. Maybe you decorate the windows of a local fast food chain or a grocery store and maybe they provide you with coupons for meals or maybe a grocery store gives you box snack items that you can have out when parent volunteers come in. But I found that it just helps people to feel appreciated and valued for giving up their time to help you save some of your time. And so when I have a volunteer coming in and I am not going to be able to greet them, I will have their treat waiting for them in the office with instructions on what they're doing. If they are hanging art for an art show, it will explain the clips and where they get placed. And so I think that when they have instructions too, it also helps them to feel more at ease, especially if you're not able to be one-on-one -on -one with them in that moment. And with them helping you in the classroom, whether it is to cut things or to hang artwork, they're ultimately seeing what you do, right? So their belief in the program and what you are about and what you are offering their child increases and all of that comes back whether it is them investing in your program in time or later in donation requests at the start of the school year because they know now what you do because they've seen it the aoeu magazine also has a ton of resources to help build your confidence and grow your program check out the following articles what do our teachers need to know about grant writing and how to expertly set up fundraising platforms to help grow your art program check out the description box below for links to these handy reads so last night on the way home from school 
I had to stop and get something that my students needed today. And right before I left last night, I caught the secretary to grab our tax exempt card. So every school's process is different for this, but it's worth knowing yours. The tax exempt card is gonna be a little card that will have your school's name and the ID number. And if you present this to the cashier when you are buying your items, you will not be charged any tax. And that seems minuscule, right? But when we're talking low to no budget, dollars do add up. And it's nice to be able to save those dollars using the tax exempt card. And another place to go for help in your community is your local library. So every summer, our library will take all of the books that have been donated throughout the year and they put them up for sale for very, very cheap. But once out of the week that they hold this book sale, they will designate a day for teachers where you can go and get 15 books for free. And I will go every summer and nab the best artist books. And we use tech a lot in my room, but I love that I have a cozy area where kids can sit and rummage through books and they do. And it's a great way to increase your classroom library and do it very cost effectively as well. Thanks so much for watching the last episode in our Zero Budget Art Room series. Is there a supply that you always reach out to your community for help with? If so, what is it? And where do you go for the donation? Share it down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future mini series with the Art of Education University.